Xpeng reported fourth quarter revenue of RMB 8.56 billion or 1.34 billion US dollars, topping median analyst estimates of RMB 8.12 billion in a Bloomberg survey according to an unaudited earnings report released today. This was up 200% from RMB 2.85 billion in the year ago quarter and up 50% from RMB 5.7 billion in the third quarter. So Xpeng have increased their revenue by a factor of 200% in only one year. Xpeng's gross margin was 12% in the fourth quarter, up from 7.4% one year earlier, but down from 14.4% in the third quarter. Research and development expenses were RMB 1.45 billion for the fourth quarter of 2021, representing an increase of 215.6% from RMB 460 million for the same period of 2020, and an increase of 15% from RMB 1,264 million for the third quarter of 2021. So you can see that Xpeng has more than doubled its investment into R&D. By the end of the fourth quarter, Xpeng's cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash, short-term deposits, short-term investments, and long-term deposits stood at 43.5 billion yen. The company previously released data showing it delivered 41,751 vehicles in the fourth quarter, above the upper end of its guidance range of 34,500 to 36,500 vehicles. Xpeng expects first quarter deliveries of 33,500 to 34,400 vehicles. Considering it delivered, a combined 19,147 vehicles in January to February. This implies March deliveries in the range of 14,353 to 14,853. In addition, for the full year 2021, Xpeng's gross margin was 12.5% for fiscal year 2021, compared to 4.6% for the previous year. My third favorite electric vehicle company has just released its earnings call and I decided after hearing the earnings call to invest more into Xpeng stock. Here's why I just bought more. And if you've got any spare money, I suggest you do too. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to have you here. Now, very soon I will create a video on my returns on the investments I've made over the past 12 months. So you get a good idea of where I'm coming from and what I've been doing and what my plans are. However, I think it's important if you're investing in a company or companies to take note of their competitors. So if you're investing in Tesla or Ford or General Motors or anyone else in the industry, it's important to know what exactly is going on. Who are their competitors? What are their competitors doing? Why are their competitors doing it? So here is Xpeng's earnings call. Today, Xpeng revealed their fourth quarter earnings. They exceeded expectations and followed up with a conference call with analysts. Here are the key points that the CEO released to the earnings call. Xpeng encountered some delivery problems last year. The proportion of orders with lithium iron phosphate batteries was larger than in the past, which is good news, but only a relatively small proportion were delivered. Xpeng will solve this problem this year through cooperation with lithium iron phosphate battery suppliers such as CATL. The cost of raw materials is rising quickly and that is having an effect on the company, but this will change, he believes, in one quarter at the earliest and three quarters at the latest. So that's the belief of Xpeng CEO that the prices for things like nickel will decline within one to three quarters. We'll see if that happens. In addition, new models, including the Xpeng G9, will allow for structural improvement in Xpeng's gross margins this year. Xpeng's mid to long-term goal is to increase the overall gross margin to more than 25%, trying to get to a Tesla-like gross margin. With the help of the scale effect and operating leverage, expenses will continue to decline. Well, obviously Xpeng are trying to deliver 300,000 vehicles this year. And I guess it's true that with scaling up to that level, they can start to increase their company operating margins. The development of Xpeng's Xpilot 5's core feature City NGP, basically Xpeng's autopilot or full self-driving, whatever you want to call it, that's what they're aiming for. They're claiming that it will be better than Tesla's full self-driving. Well, it's pretty good. We're yet to see though if it'll be better. 
apparently work on this platform is progressing well. And after receiving approval from authorities, the feature has been scheduled to be launched in the first cities by the end of the second quarter of this year. Xpun plans to officially launch Xpilot 4.0 in 2023, enabling intelligent assisted driving for all scenarios on the highway and in the city. In 2023, Xpun will have at least four models supporting Xpilot 4.0 and will gradually unify the intelligent assisted driving hardware and software platforms for new Xpun models. Now, Xpilot 4.0, will utilize LiDAR in order to work. It's a very interesting system, and I'll talk about that system in a new video. Most importantly, Xpeng will launch two new platforms and their first models in 2023, the C-segment platform and B-segment platform. These new platforms will inherit and develop Xpeng's continued leadership in aesthetic design capabilities. I've got to admit, Xpeng does know how to design cars pretty well. Electrification and smart driving capabilities and advanced manufacturing processes. This will help Xpeng gain extreme cost control and reach a broader user base in the mid-range and high-end markets with significant growth potential. In 2022, Xpeng aims to have P7 sales exceed 10,000 deliveries in a single month. In 2021, Xpeng P7 deliveries were 60,000. That's an increase of 302% year on year. So we didn't learn a whole lot from this, but we do know that Xpeng and their manufacturing partner have basically split ways. And Xpeng does manufacture, well, more cars than they outsourced. So Xpeng does have its own factory, but because it's split ways with its manufacturing partner, there probably will be a bit of a decline in deliveries over the next few months. That's my prediction because Xpeng are now manufacturing everything in-house. They're losing that manufacturing capability, which is probably about 30% of their current capacity. They're losing that, but they're aiming to double their own manufacturing capability this year. They're building a new factory to do that. That's what matters. That's what's important. I think that's one of the advantages that they have over their rival, their biggest rival in China. Clearly, it's not Li Auto. Sorry if you think it is because Li Auto, um, while they're great, they still use plug-in hybrids and that's not the future of the automobile. Their biggest rival is Neo. However, Neo does outsource all manufacturing. Even though it's sort of a JV partnership with JAC, it still to some degree does mean that that could hamper their ongoing profitability and just mean there's a bit more of a level of bureaucracy involved. Decisions might be made more slowly. Xpeng now has moved away from having any kind of joint venture partner. I think that's a good move. It's one of the key reasons I've invested in the company. I think even though this will result in a little bit of short-term pain, I mean, look at the stock price, right? It's basically crashed versus where it was only two months ago when it was sitting at 50 US dollars. I mean, now it's at $26.60. That's half, half the price. And realistically, what do we know this year? Well, we know that Xpeng are aiming to sell and deliver 300,000 vehicles. Highly unlikely they do that. In my view, I believe they will hit their goal of 250,000. I think that's possible. Is it going to be 300? Absolutely zero chance based on the information I just shared with you about their manufacturing partner ceasing to produce vehicles for Xpeng. However, that was for an older model. And I believe Xpeng were wanting to move away from that older model anyway. And I believe less profitable model as well. They want to move towards making their, all their own cars in order to make more profit and also to be able to control the manufacturing process more. I think that's a really good move. Short term though, that, I mean, you can see what's happened. Short term, it's led to a 50% decline in this value of their stock price. By the end of this year, I am targeting a 50 US dollar stock price. Now, do experts actually agree with me that's probably what matters. Well, tip ranks. What do they have to say about that? Well, let's have a look at the analysts over the last six months. Over the last six months, about 16 different analysts have given their estimates for Xpeng stock price. The average target is around about 45 US dollars, right? Which is significantly higher than where it's at today. Highest price targets are sitting at around about 60 US dollars. The lowest price target is at 28. So we're currently sitting below the lowest price target that any expert has given the company over the last six months. You can see there's quite a bit of potential upside here, probably not a lot of downside. Now the six current recent ratings within the last month of those six ratings, all six are buy, none are hold, none are sell. Now, five days ago, China Renaissance Securities Inc. analyst Yiming Wang gave the company a price target of $55.60. And he said it's a buy with 110% upside. Now, probably the best analyst in terms of their long-term success to have actually analyzed the company that we have data for is Zhong Xiao from Barclays. He gives the company a price target of $45 US dollars. And obviously, if we do get to 45 US dollars this year, then that'll be a significant gain on your portfolio. You're looking at about a 40% gain. That's pretty good. I think 
it's going to hit 50. I think that's a fair target. We're at 50 two months ago. And what's happened during that time? Nothing negative at all. If anything, we've seen Xpeng deliver what sounds like a poor result in February, but actually that's not true at all. They delivered 6,225 vehicles in February of 2022, right? Sounds not that great compared to the 16,000 they delivered in January last year. However, what about last February? What did they do last February? Last February, they delivered 180% less than that. Now, in February, they delivered 3,537 P7s, representing a 151% year-over-year increase, 2,059 P5s, which are their new vehicle, which just started delivery in February. By the way, that's the vehicle I believe will be a significant pain in the ass of Toyota Camry because it's basically the same price as a Camry, yet it's superior in every single way, as I keep going on about. This brings cumulative deliveries of the P5 to 13,953 units since its launch in September of 2021. They also delivered 629 G3 and G3 Smart Compact SUVs, which is the vehicle that was being developed, built by their joint venture manufacturing partner, who they no longer work with. So you can see here that the reason for those low sales figures for the G3 and the G3 Smart Compact SUVs were because not only are they old vehicles, but they're kind of not a priority for the company anymore. Now, three really important things to consider that have happened in February as well that people are not really talking about. Xpeng was added to the Shenzhen Hong Kong and Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect programs, which allows qualified Chinese mainland investors to trade eligible Hong Kong shares of Xpeng, giving millions more people access to stock generally leads in increased prices. It's pretty normal. Second, it was announced that Xpeng will be included in the Hang Seng Tech Index as a constituent stock, effective March the 7th. This is a strong endorsement of the company's underlying strength as a technology leader in the smart mobility industry. Third, the company announced its strategic partnerships with two renowned European automobile players for agency retail collaborations in the Netherlands and Sweden. At the same time, Xpunk's first branded overseas retail experience store opened in Stockholm in Sweden. My prediction is that by this time next year, Xpunk will be selling their electric vehicles in at least 10 European countries, and their production capacity will likely have minimum double, potentially tripled. So do your own research, make up your own mind, but as you can see, it's a pretty compelling case for this stock, which has been beaten down severely by fears over deregulation, a delisting from the US Stock Exchange, which clearly isn't gonna happen. In my view, most of the risks in this company no longer present any real substantial reason for not investing today. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. If you're investing in electric vehicle stocks or if you're considering investing in, in them, who is on your radar and why? Now, if you want to check out any videos about Xpeng, the company, I've probably made about 30 of them, I believe, over the last 12 months. I'll put links in the description below where you can learn more about the company, what they do, what their products are, why their products are, in my mind, some of the best on the planet.